just in 10 minutes we are going to discuss about configuring incremental refresh and this is a PL300 examination topic also. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. Let me give a simple introduction about incremental refresh. Assume that you have a data set where the first transaction happened on 1st January 2017. The current year as on date of recording is 2023. Other than the current year, we have 6 years of data. To optimize data refresh, you have decided to archive data for 3 years while you publish your report to Power BI services. In effect, you will retain the data for the 3 years that is 2022, 2021 and 2020 which are the 3 years preceding the date of refresh. In addition to that, current year's data is also retained. So, what will happen to data for the years 2017, 18 and 19? They will be thrown out in Power BI services. All the report visuals are filtered for the period 2020-2023 in Power BI services. As a next step, you have decided the data within 10 days from current date only needs to participate in the refresh process. In effect, you have trimmed the amount of data that needs to be refreshed. This is the concept of incremental refresh. So there are two policy terms you are going to define. How many years you want to retain as an archived data or historical data and how many days of data you want to refresh. So in this example, I am talking about retaining three years of data and the refresh should happen within 10 days. You may now ask me a question. Hey Mr. Raja, what will happen in the next year? Let us say, we have crossed 2023 and we have in 2024, what will happen? Data for year 2020 will be removed in Power BI services. Data for the year 2023 will join the list of historical data. Data for the year 2024 will be the current data. In the current data, refresh will happen for the last 10 days or any quantum that was decided by you. In terms of concept, there are two important things. Number one, the data source should be query foldable and the data storage mode should be import if you want to implement incremental refresh. The incremental refresh feature allows you to refresh large data sets quickly and as often as you need. The main advantage is you need not have to reload historical data each time. If you want to know about query folding, please watch one of my videos that is part 5.1 from the 20th minute to 27th minute I have explained about the concept of query folding. There are three major advantages of incremental refresh such as quicker refreshes, reliable and reduced resource consumption. Alright Mr. Raja, why don't you jump into demonstration now? I am going to do that and then come back to points of discussion a little later. Ok, I have a Power BI desktop file readily available. As you can see, the data has been acquired from a SQL Server database which is query foldable and the storage mode is import. So these are the two primary conditions that needs to be satisfied if you want to implement incremental refresh. This data set is holding data from the year 2017 till the current year 2023. I have used the simple DAX function called today to show the current date in the screen. The first step for creating incremental refresh is to define two parameters. For that, I need to move to my Power Query editor and then we'll quickly create two parameters. I click on manage parameter, new parameter and this name is a reserved name which you should not change. Please make a note of that. Range start is the name of the first parameter I am going to create and the type of data should be date and time. Suggested values can be any. Current value you can define what amount of data you want to import from your SQL Server. 
I am going to type the very first date of my database that is 1st January 2017. After typing the date and time component, I am going to hit OK. And this has created a parameter called range start with a current value that was decided by me. Now, I am going to create the second parameter in the name called range end. The type of the data should also be date and time. And the current value, I am just using today's date. As you can see, the date of recording is 9th October 2023. I am using today's date, hitting OK for this. And my second parameter is successfully created. The next step is to apply these parameters on the order date column in this fact file. I am going to use a custom filter option in which I am going to say keep rows where the order date is after or equal to a parameter called range stat and is before can be used. For obvious reasons, I am going to use is before or equal to parameter called range end. Click OK. Now the database is filtered for the date values you have defined as start and end. I am going to click close and apply to load this data into the model. In the report page, I am going to create two card visuals to show the number of records that are currently loaded. And I am going to use any one information from here, let us say the profit value just for sake of information. Here are the two card visuals I was talking about. One of them shows the total profit and the other one shows the total number of transactions that has happened. Now let me show you one important thing. I am going back to my Power Query editor. would like to reach the applied steps and then click on the gear icon to go back to the filtering activity. I used an option called is before or equal to which means that if today is 9th of October 2023 including today I want the data to be incorporated or I can use is before that means if I am talking about 9th of October then data till 8th of October which is completed will be included in the data refresh option. I am going to click OK for that. I am going to click on close and apply. Then you may see a small change in the results. The profit value has changed and the number of transactions have changed. That is for one day. We are now going to define the incremental refresh policy. I click on the more options to select incremental refresh from the contextual menu. Would like to incrementally refresh this table and then archive data starting three years and then incrementally refresh the data starting 10 days. Now you can see some date ranges popping up here. Data will be imported from 1-1-2020 till 29th of September 2023. Both dates are inclusive. Data will be incrementally refreshed from 30th of September to 9th of October. Both days are inclusive. So what happened to 2017, 18, 19? As I informed earlier, they are not going to be considered once you define this policy and then publish this file. Let us check that. Let me click OK. Let me save the file. Click on Publish and choose the workspace. The file is successfully published into my Power BI workspace, then I'm able to see the data as I could see in the desktop. All the years are available. The profit value is 759 billion and the transactions are 1934, 748. Everything looks to be good, Raja. But Raja, you said something called flushing out the data for the three years because we are going to archive only for three years and so on. What happened to that? That will not happen initially and you need to go to the data set, hit on the refresh option and the initial refresh will take a huge amount of time. Of course, in this example, it will be only a few seconds because the data is not so huge. I'm just waiting for the refresh to complete. This is quite a small amount of data, but it takes a couple of seconds as you can see. Yep, I think probably it is now done with. Let me hit on the report component and then I'm still able to see everything here. Let me click on the refresh here. Now you can see that there are data available only for three archived years called 2020, 21, 22. Current year is 2023. And now we are talking about a profit of 424 billion and so on. As informed already, once we move into year 2024, 
data belonging to 2021 22 23 will be considered as historical data and the current year data will be 2024 once we reach that particular year now let me quickly show you at another easy way to understand how the three years were thrown out by going back to my power bi desktop hit on the transform data option to click on edit parameters and if i am going to manually choose to filter the data for 11-2020 to 10-10-2023 I'm going to click OK then click on apply changes you are now able to see only four years in the desktop also with a profit of 424 billions looks to be correct the transaction numbers are 1078-976 looks to be correct so this is just to help you to understand the concept of incremental refresh instead of you throwing out a specific number of years again and again manually that process is now automated in incremental refresh so that at any point of time you will have the current year three historical years and the data will be refreshed for the duration that you have defined as 10 days or one month or 15 days or whatever it may be so this is all about incremental refresh let me quickly touch upon some important points through the summary slides you just saw the creation of the two parameters there is no need for me to explain anything in this particular slide you also saw the demonstration about filtering the data and defining the incremental refresh policy also just a snapshot of what you saw in the demonstration in the other learning points i would like to highlight a couple of things the first refresh operation can take quite some time depending on the amount of data that needs to be loaded from the data source the complexity of the model can also be a significant factor because refresh operations must do more processing and recalculation so please be aware of that with incremental refresh the service dynamically partitions and separates data that needs to be refreshed frequently from data that can be refreshed less frequently we just saw the demonstration on incremental refresh in the next video, we'll be talking about creating customized tooltip pages. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment and share. See you in the next video.